Bickley and Murata. Bickley and Murata mornings. Arizona Sports, the local sports leader. Blast. When it comes to closing acts that matter, Devin Booker has only been legendary once, and that was in a bubble in the middle of a pandemic. Maybe we finally get the encore in 2024. And I bring that up because Book has scored 92 points in the past two games, and his 52-point barrage in New Orleans seemed to instantly change the arc of an enigmatic team. And while Book has had a statistically satisfying season, there is a feeling that maybe he's been laying in the weeds, saving the really great stuff for right here, right now. Remember this, for one forgotten week last spring, Booker was the best basketball player on the planet. In the first four games of a series against the Nuggets, he averaged 36 points per game while shooting 64% from the floor and an absurd 57% from beyond the three-point line. For those four games, he was the best Devin Booker we have ever seen, and then he was bit by injury, the lights went out on a season, and fair or not, Book remained a star, not yet built for elimination games. So maybe Book and his new line of shoes are getting ready to kick unprecedented amounts of backside, and you can sign me up for that. And if Book keeps rolling through this weekend, you can rest assured of the following. The Suns will not be anyone's pick to win an NBA championship, but they'll be everybody's pick for the scariest first-round opponent, opponent to be avoided at all costs. All right, today's Bickley Blast brought to you by my great friends at Chapman BMW who make luxury attainable. Find them online at chapmanbmw.com. I'd love to take credit for it, uh, but it's book being book. You know, he, he's, he's got a unique ability. Uh, to just raise his level above everyone around him and uh, do what he did the last couple games. And you know, he knows what, uh, what is at stake right now with these, these games we view as the playoffs before the playoffs. And, uh, you know, we want to do everything we can to get in the, in the top six while remaining confident that if we are in the playing game, you know, that we'll, we'll win those games as well. But, you know, it's just that time of year for him, and he's going to make sure he does whatever the team needs for us to win. Book being book. That's the reason Frank Vogel gives for the uh, hot streak, as you mentioned in the blast pick, 92 mm. points in his previous two games. He's gone on binges like this before. We have seen him do this uh, from, from time to time. Uh, the number that stands out to me the most, however, uh, is not the 92. Mm -hmm. It's 13. He's made 13 three-pointers yep. in the last two games, mm -hmm. and that is on the heels of a stretch where he was really having difficulty from, from three-point range, putting the ball in the hole, and that just adds. We've talked so much about the importance of the three. Oh, yeah. Shooting the three, making the three, defending the three. Mm -hmm. Those are three things the Suns have struggled with this year consistently, although their percentage as a team, it, it, the shooting percentage is good from three. Their number of attempts is way down on the list. Just stands to reason, hey, mm -hmm. if you're a good shooting team from three, you want to put more attempts up. So to see Devin Booker shoot a high volume, he shot 25 in the last three games, high numbers for him. Mm -hmm. That is such a positive on both fronts. Without a doubt. Makes yeah. and attempts. Yes, no, without a doubt. And again, that's that's kind of why people are going, okay, is this sort of like the final ascent of Devin Booker. You know, it's 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 like when you're on a plane, you get that final descent after a long flight. Mm -hmm. This is almost like the opposite, the final ascent at the end of a long season, and, and you wonder if, that, if this is what it is or if this is just a heater. Um, I'm really hoping it's a former. I'm, I'm hoping that maybe Book and his battle scars and all the things he's dealt with, he, he, he understands where where you have to win. And and how you can get derailed and, and maybe maybe some of that focus and that energy and that killer mentality of his, maybe he's kept a lot of it in reserve. It's a theory. We'll see. Maybe. But like I said, it you go back, it, it, you forget because of how poorly the series ended, those final two losses against the Nuggets, the injury to Devin Booker that slowed him noticeably, uh, DA checking out entirely um, and, and not playing. It was another one of those awful, terrible elimination game experiences. You forget, or it's, I'll, I'll say we collectively, it's easy to forget how incredible Devin Booker was in those first four games. Mm -hmm. Those two games in Phoenix, he was, everything he pulled up and shot was going in. I think Booker and Durant in one of those first two games in, in, in Phoenix, they combined for like 92 points or something. It was, it was some insane. ridiculous it was number. It insane. 
So that that's my best hope, Vinny, that, that everything that has plagued this team is about to kind of fade away because uh-huh. Devin Booker says so. By the way, that wasn't the only Suns news, or this is, we're not just talking about the Suns on the court. Um, the new facility that was talked about six months ago, the new office complex slash Mercury practice facility, it's open. The, the practice facility is not open yet. That will open up later this summer uh, as they make the transition over there. But the office space is open. We were just having the discussion on the Coyotes. Mm-hmm. What? Who would build or who, or who would buy a hockey team in the Valley without an arena? Matt Ishbia might. He can get stuff done and really quick. Yeah. From, from the ground up six months? That, yeah. You don't hear about that. Oh, no, I know. But it's it's not like a stadium that was I know. Built. I know. Yeah. We just need Dan Gilbert to buy a hockey team. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Well played, Ruthless. I'm gonna get That's him. all we need. Uh, yeah, the Dan, so, and, the Dan and Gilbert thing was, came up and, in the media. Yeah, and it was interesting that Matt Ishbia um, uh, referenced that story that, if if you want to call it a story, uh, a report that came from a— Hunter from, Brook. Yeah, which, which is, isn't even a media company. No. That sort of questioned the business practices of United Wholesale Mortgage. And and Matt Ishbia said, yeah, that's, you know, Dan Gilbert and Rocket Mortgage doing Dan Gilbert and Rocket Mortgage kind of things. Yeah, I think it was Dwayne Rankin <laughs> from uh, AZ Central asked the question about that story, which came out in conjunction with an ESPN story about the, the relationship slash rivalry between the two. Yeah, you know, you can talk to UWM about that kind of folks on Phoenix today, but, like, you know and I know that's Rocket Mortgage and Dan Gilbert doing Rocket Mortgage and Dan Gilbert things. And that's just what's been funded by, and you can do the details. But talk to UW about that. I'm more focused on Phoenix today and all the great things and people that know us and what we're all about, and you can see that. I, um, there's a lot of shadiness in that story if you really dig into it, and other people have dug into it far more than I have, and i got to give credit to Greg Esposito from PHNX. Uh, he did a deep dive on it, and, and, and if you follow him, uh, you'll see that shadiness. Mm. But i got to say this. Is this not the makings of a real-life like succession type show, like a Sunday night television show on HBO, or even like a feature film, the relationship between these two companies. It's like Game of Thrones. It's like it war, is. warring no, it, families. It's, yeah, and... it's yeah. You're right. It's like what? Which house do you prefer, yeah, right. House Lannister or House Stark? Yeah, House Gilbert or House Gilbert House or Ishbia. House, house Ishbia. <laughs> yeah, how about it? There's some juicy stuff in there. But, yeah, like uh, I said, I don't think we've ever seen – most of the times when an owner is rival uh, is feuding, it's with the commissioner who's representing the owners, the other owners who don't like the guy, like Al Davis versus Pete Rozelle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. Rarely do you get two guys going after each other like this. Same industry, same home state. Yeah, it's quite something. Yeah, they live 15 minutes apart. Isn't that unreal? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching Bickley and Murata. Click to see the latest Bickley Blast and hit the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.